Hi everyone, it's Erin from Riverbend, and this week we're going to be talking about decomposition. So I had this really cool idea um, as I was walking through the forest and I noticed that there were a lot of trees that had fallen and some logs that looked very different from my really cool maple tree here. This is my favorite tree in my backyard, so I'm really happy to share that with you. Um, but I was wondering, why do they look so different after they've been on the ground for a long time? And I thought that this would be a really cool lesson to talk about in our uh, in our series this week. So before we get started, did everyone bring your nature science journals? Um, make sure that you write in all of the information that you need for your science investigation this week. So think about today's date, the weather. Um, did it really rain a whole lot yesterday or was it sunny? Um, what kind of conditions are we thinking about here? So um, before we go out into the woods, I'm going to show you what I found and I want uh, for you to take some cool observations. So this is this really cool thing that I picked up off the ground. I'm going to put it up to the camera so you can see. Um, this is really interesting. And to me, everything that I found on the ground was this really deep, dark color. And you can see it next to my maple tree. It looks very different, right? So some of the things I'm noticing, lots of moss growing on it. Um, it's really crumbly. So let me just kind of crumble this up so you can see. It almost falls apart like soil or dirt in my hand. It's really cool. Um, and there's also these uh, little holes that you see all over and ridges. It's really cool. And it smells interesting. Interesting. That's all I'll say about that. And if you find these in your backyard or in the woods, then you can see what it smells like too and you'll know what I'm talking about. So we can definitely go out into the woods and look for those big logs, um, certainly, but we don't have to go that far. In fact, there is a little spot in my backyard that is perfect to look for a, a piece of rotting wood or tree branch. So a couple of years ago when we first moved in, one of the neighbors gave us a big pile of wood. And unfortunately we don't have a wood stove and we didn't have a fire pit. So it has just kind of sat on the side of the shed for that long. Um, and I have a feeling if we were to start to pull some of that wood apart, we would find lots of different things similar to what I found in the wood. So Come with me for one second. We're gonna go take a look. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can turn this video around here. It's such a beautiful day. And we're gonna kinda of zoom in here. You see my, oh, there we go. And you can see there is so much happening on these logs. I can see some lichen growing. I see all kinds of different things happening here. And I'm just gonna start to pull. Wow, wow, check that out. I see lots of earthworms. I don't know if you can see that there. That's an earthworm, another earthworm. You can see that. I also think I saw a whole bunch of roly polies and they kind of scattered away. Oh, and a centipede there too. Lots of different things going on here. So, so one of the things that we notice right away is we've got some rotting wood here for sure. Now this looks a little bit different than what I just showed you. It's still really dark, still really brittle, um, lots of holes and ridges, and it looks like it's certainly been eaten away. Um, and I noticed something, there are a lot of earthworms down here, a ton of earthworms. So it makes me think that maybe earthworms have something to do with this process of turning a tree from what is growing in the ground to maybe a piece of a log that you might find when it falls on the ground or maybe when you cut down a tree to like this crazy decomposing piece of wood. What happens? What makes that happen? Um, one of the things I'm thinking because I see all these earthworms is it could have something to do with the earthworms. Does anybody else think that could be it? So we're going to learn a little bit more about that. Thank you. 
so we know that from our investigations, when we look at a piece of wood that is decaying and rotting on the ground, whether it be a log or some wood from my wood pile in my backyard, we know we see earthworms. We see lots of earthworms. So I think that one of the answers to our question about what turns a tree from a living thing um, after it dies on the ground to this crumbly, decaying piece of log. What what does that? And the fact that we see earthworms is a real clue that they may have something to do with that. So there is actually a way that you can study earthworms up close. We're going to create what's called a scientific model. Okay. So scientists use models all of the time. And a model is just simply a miniature version of something in real life that is made into a miniature so you could study it very carefully. In fact, I've been cleaning out my house and I found this lovely model right here of Beaver Stadium for any Penn State fans right there. I thought this was really cool. So I can't bring Beaver Stadium to you on YouTube. However, I found my husband's real life two scale model of Beaver Stadium. So if you wanted to look at any aspect of Beaver Stadium, whether it be how many seats, um, the ratio of field to seats, the ratio of grass to stadium, you can look right here at this model. But that's not the mo type of model that we're doing with our earthworms here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create something called a vermicompost bin. And it's basically a worm habitat that we can use to study what worms do over time. So here I am with our scientific model. Remember, we're looking at earthworms and what they can do in an ecosystem. So what I have here is a Burmy compost bin. Turn that upside down. So we're working with compost right now. And what we know about vermicompost is that we create a little ecosystem for our earthworms and our earthworms do a really important job for us. So this is my personal vermicompost bin. You can see some of the worms that are living in here. Let's get an up close look there. Okay. Um, and these guys do a really simple job. What they do is I put food waste in here. So things that are no longer growing in the ground, think about it, like my apple cores, potato peels, banana peels, um, little bits of salad that don't have dressing on them. Um, I put newspaper in here. They also like some, a little bit of cardboard, not a whole lot. Um, and then what they do is very simply, they eat those things um, and they digest them and then they poop. And when they poop out all of that stuff, it's great nutrients that I can then put on my garden. So this is a way that worms help us to decompose. So we know now by looking at our scientific model and thinking about our decomposing logs that we see in nature, that these are great decomposers. I want you to think for a second about some other decomposers that we see. If you go outside and flip open a log, see what things you find in there. You'll find living things. You might find fungi like mushrooms and shelf fungus and all sorts of things growing on um, a fallen log. And all of those things are decomposing. So another way that scientists build investigations is by doing some research. They read books about uh, the things that they're studying to get some background information. And as we all know, there are two different types of books that we can look at. We can look at fiction and we can look at nonfiction. And nonfiction books and articles are a great way to learn about the natural history of a species like an earthworm or to learn about ecology to help you build your investigation. Um, we also have fiction, which is a lot of fun. And so I thought I would take this opportunity to share with you one of my favorite books about earthworms. It is called Diary of a Worm. And this is written by Doreen Cronin 
and illustrated by Harry Bliss. And what I love about this book is it's actually written from the perspective or from the feelings of an earthworm. So you can transport yourself into the world of what it could be like if you were an earthworm. So are you ready? We might learn a little bit about earthworms here too. Okay. So this is a diary or a journal. And so look at this, this is amazing. Some things that I noticed, just like in your journals, we've got a date and we've got an illustration and we've got some things that the earthworm is talking about. So first day, March 20th, mom says there are three things I should always remember. The earth gives us everything that we need. There's me, there's the earth. When we dig tunnels, we help take care of the earth. Must make tunnel help earth breathe. Number three, never bother daddy when he's eating the newspaper. Chomp. March 29th. Today, I tried to teach Spider how to dig. First of all, his legs got stuck. I think I twisted one of my ankles. Then he swallowed a bunch of dirt. I give up. Tomorrow, he's going to teach me how to walk upside down. April 1st, worms cannot walk upside down. <laughs> okay. April 4th, fishing season started today. We all dug a little deeper. Did you guys hear something? April 10th, it rained all night and the ground was soaked. We spent the entire day on the sidewalk. Hopscotch is a very dangerous game. Now look, at that's an interesting perspective, it's like you're a worm looking up at that big person and their shoes. April 15th, I forgot my lunch today. I got so hungry that I ate my homework. My teacher made me write, I will not eat my homework 10 times. When I was finished, I ate that too. April 20th, I snuck up on some kids in the park today. They didn't hear me coming. I wriggled up right between them and they screamed. <laughs> I love it when they do that. May 1st, grandpa taught us that good manners are very important. So today I said, good morning to the first aunt that I saw. Good morning. <gasps> there were six hundred more of them in line. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How you doing? Good morning, nice to see you. Howdy, good morning. I stood there all day. May 8th, I had the worst nightmare last night. Giant birds playing hopscotch. Mom said I have to stop eating so much garbage right before I go to bed. May 15th, I got in a fight with Spider today. He told me you need legs to be cool. Then he ran. I couldn't keep up. Maybe he's right. May 16th, I made Spider laugh so hard he fell out of his tree. Who needs legs? Okay. May 28th, last night I went to the school dance. You put your head in, you put your head out. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself about and that's all we could do. June 5th. Today we made macaroni necklaces in art class. I brought mine home and we ate it for dinner. You're very talented. June 15th. My older sister thinks she's so pretty. I told her that no matter how much time she spends looking in the mirror, her face will always look just like her rear end. <gasps> Spider thought that was really funny. Mom did not. July 4th. When I grow up, I want to be a Secret Service agent. Spider says I will have to be very careful because the president might step on me by mistake. It's a dangerous job, I told him, but somebody's got to do it. July 28th. Three things I don't like about being a worm. Number one, I can't chew gum. Number two, I can't have a dog. Number three, all that homework. July 29th, the three thing, three good things about being a worm. Number one, I never have to go to the dentist. No cavities, no teeth either. Number two, I never get in trouble for tracking mud through the house. Number three, I never have to take a bath. 
Who's my grubby little boy? August 1st. It's not always be easy being a worm. We're very small, and sometimes people forget we're even here. But like Mom always says, the Earth never forgets we're here. Wow, and there's some family pictures. Very cool. So even though this is fiction, so this is not real, it's made up, it was a story, it told us a lot about worms. So we learned a little bit about what it's like to be a worm and maybe had some clues about their role in taking care of the earth. So um, we can look at this and we can also share some nonfiction books about worms that are fact-based. So what I would love for you to do in your journal, if you um, want to do this afterwards or push pause and do it now, is why don't you think about your favorite animal, or maybe it's a worm, maybe it's a bug or a bird or something that you see in your backyard, and think about what it must be like to be that animal. And if you could write maybe two or three um, entries um, from a diary of your favorite animal, and I would love to see what you come up with. So if you would like to send those to Riverbend, we'll provide the email at the end of this video, and I would love to see some pictures of your diaries, of your animal diaries, um, when you're finished. So this is a great spot to look for decomposers. If you look along the stream bank here, there are a number of fallen logs and dead trees, and it looks like they've been here for a while. Lots of good habitat for our decomposers underneath. We're going to take this one here, see if I can roll it over and find something cool. Whoa. Oh, that's really heavy. Okay. That one's a little heavy. Let's keep walking this way. How about, here's a really cool one. It's covered with some moss. Let's see if we can flip it over and find something. <gasps> wow, check it out. All the way underneath here. Look at all of this soil. I see some earthworms. This looks a lot like my compost. And wow, check this out. Actually found, this is, very cool, a red-backed salamander from Pennsylvania. He's just kind of chilling out out here. It is definitely salamander season, so we're seeing salamanders come out and breed, and we're even seeing um, eggs this time of year and little tiny salamanders like this guy. He's so cool. So we've been studying decomposition for a couple of days now. We have learned some things. Um, we've looked at models of decomposition. We've studied decomposition in my backyard, in the woods, at Riverbend, all, all over the place. And we have learned that decomposition is really nature's most amazing way to recycle. So when things are, are growing in the ground, like trees and eventually die, they fall to the ground. And over time, this really cool process of decomposers and bacteria and sunlight and warmth and air all come together to help break that tree down and turn those nutrients into usable soil that can grow new trees. So decomposition is happening all around us and is really important. What I would love to hear from you all now that you've seen this video are two things. Number one, study decomposition in your own home. So take your nature journal, um, take out a couple of different things that you think might decompose, like an apple or a strawberry, and put them in a container and watch them over a couple of days. Record what you see, your observations, how they change over time. Think about what makes something decompose faster or slower. It, maybe it's warmth, maybe it's light. Also, remember that really cool story we, we read about the earthworms, um, Diary of a Worm? I want you to pick your favorite decomposer 
uh, whether it be an earthworm or a beetle or um, a, any other kind of animal that you can think of, and write a diary about that animal in their day. What kinds of things do they do throughout the day? And remember, we're writing it from the perspective of the decomposer. Please share with me your journals and your diaries, and uh, we'll even highlight some of those on Riverbend's webpage. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.